Hi, this is Morgan Smith. I'm a partner and advisor with WorthPoint. We're an investment advisor. And I'm here with my special guest, Nate DeLong. He's a vice president, certified pension consultant with Future Plan. Nate, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, Morgan. Happy to be here. Well, thanks for having us. Um, and we're going to get going here. Today's video is a conversation on who needs a cash balance plan. And when it gets down to it, I, I think you could just easily say any successful business owner who desires a tax saving uh, on an annual basis uh, for the time that the cash balance plan is in place is a candidate. Now, obviously, we need, we need to look at some other factors. Um, so if you're really looking for some tax savings as a business owner and you desire to kind of turbocharge your retirement savings, um, a cash plan, balance plan could be a really good fit uh, for you. So let's talk about this a little more and uh, get into some of the um, aspects of cash balance plans and who they may be relevant for. So this is uh, from Beyond the 401k uh, by uh, Kravitz. Guid Rose and Sansone. It's a great book and um, a lot of great information in there. But just kind of across industries, uh, if you're out there kind of in, in a business and a, a business owner and wondering whether or not it's relevant for you, well, you might be surprised that uh, cash balance plans have really been deployed and being taken up by a lot of different uh, industries and business owners in different industries. I mean, typically a lot of my cash balance plan clients tend to be uh, physicians and dentists and uh, some manufacturing firms and things like that. But Nate, can you give us a little bit of context here on uh, what you're seeing out there in the marketplace and across the nation and relevant to the slide here? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think cash balance plans are great for, you know, the physicians, the dentists. Um, they're a little bit more recession proof, I think, than some other industries. Uh, you know, cash balance plans do have annual funding requirements. So having that consistent income, that high income, uh, really makes you a great candidate for cash balance plans. And, and really what we find the majority of cash balance plans tend to be written in California and New York. Uh, almost a third, uh, no surprise, those are the high tax states. So hey, they're great ways to shelter a very large piece of your income from current taxation and defer that taxation out to a future year. Uh, you know, physicians are great, dentists are great, they are more recession proof, but I really see it across all industries. I think, you know, just looking at my last several new clients, if, if you're doing well and your business is growing, and your high profits, high profitability, then you probably have a tax problem. And these are great solutions, not just to accelerate retirement savings, but to help the business owner shelter more of their hard earned profits from current taxation. And it's interesting here how, you know, the uptake is 22% uh, from physicians. And, you know, you might say, okay, well, gosh, that's, those are the folks who best benefit from them. But it may be that these other business owners in these different kind of industries aren't getting um, informed about cash balance plans. So when I think about it, I look maybe an underserved, some underserved markets, maybe a manufacturing um, and wholesale trade family run businesses who's you maybe started in the garage and now they've got a, a great wholesale business or a manufacturing firm going on in their income is is really increasing and and now instead of maybe a cash flow problem they've got a tax problem and uh, so what do you think about some of these underserved markets i think the goal here is really to educate folks in in maybe some of these underserved markets yeah absolutely it's really across all industries if you're doing well um psychiatrist uh, a neurosurgeon um real estate developers, real estate agents, commercial and residential, you know, it's really across all across the board. I think I do tend to see more radiologists, urologists, more of those groups, and those are great. Um, but really it's across all industries, IT consultants, um, just to name a few, last few folks I've sat down with. So I can't really narrow it down to any specific industry. It tends to be 
look, if you're doing well, that's great. Your business is growing. Um, you know, maybe a few years ago, you were maybe not as profitable, but as your business has grown and you've generated more profits, you begin to de develop a bit of a tax problem. And so it's really across all industries. So I see a lot of family businesses incorporating cash balance plans into their business model. And the points we're going to talk about here, I think what's really important is when you have a business, oftentimes early days, you're just thinking about today and next week and, and okay, let's get the business for them. Let's, let, let's get the business up and running. But, when you start a business, you really should be thinking right off the bat about the end game. What is your goal for the business? What's the succession plan? And how are you going to business structure affects that? Um, types of pension plans and ownership structures um, affect that. And so this should be not a conversation 10 years from now after you start your business, but up front so you get the structure and the ongoing business operations in line with what your goals are in life with retirement and, and everything else. So uh, I think this is a good slide. Uh, Nate, we can talk about some of those points with ownership structure, succession planning, and generational retirement planning. Yeah, I think ownership structure is definitely an important. Um, and, and so is entity type. Is it is it a corporation? Uh, is it a partnership? Is it a sole proprietorship? Because we're looking at different income at those different entities. So it's important that we understand the structure, uh, but also the ownership structure. Owners are a little bit unique in how we structure um, these types of retirement plans. Uh, I'm working with a group right now. They've got 10 owners. Uh, we put together a pension plan. Turns out only five of the owners want to participate. Uh, the other five are a little bit younger Income isn't as high just yet. They're still kind of building themselves toward that, towards that goal. Uh, but ownership, if you are an owner, allows us to direct contributions to different owners, different individuals. So ownership structure and, and for us to understand that ownership structure and is it going to be changing in the future, uh, you know, really helps us plan uh, and put together a more um, maybe successful design for that for that individual group. Uh, as part of succession planning, occasionally I'll work with a business owner, sometimes attorneys, for example, that have a junior partner and a senior partner. And eventually, maybe we're going to pass this plan off or this business off to that junior partner. So we might fund the senior partner a little bit more aggressively um, as a way to kind of set them up for retirement. And then they can exit the business maybe a little bit sooner and pass that business on to the junior partner as an example. Uh, the great things about these retirement plans is all the money that goes into the pension plans that we design, they all have a lump sum distribution option, meaning you don't have to annuitize. So once the plan has run its course, you can roll that money over to an IRA. Or if anything happens to the business owner, their spouse and kids are named as the beneficiaries, uh, both inside of the plan and outside of the plan if they do roll the money out. So it's a great way for some generational uh, retirement plan. Well, good. I, I, I think the takeaway here is uh, when you're starting a business, things can get you know a little crazy and you can get overwhelmed because generally as a business owner, you're wearing a lot of hats. And the tendency sometimes is, to not sit down and take a moment and think about these things because uh, when you have, when you can educate yourself on putting in place, you know, uh, something like a cash balance plan, uh, it may affect some of these decisions and how you want to structure uh, the business um, and the partners can have a better idea of, of how things look down the road and it can really help out with succession planning. If you take a moment to talk to us up front and help you kind of talk about the advantages and different disadvantages of, of dis different ways of structuring um, your business, if, you know, for example, entity types and things like that. Well, um, that's a good overview on uh, the unique needs of family businesses. 
And uh, I'm a big believer that family businesses are a real big driver of our economy. And uh, a lot of families are really um, getting stressed with taxes and things like that. So uh, this is a good conversation here. All right, so here's a eligibility, eligibility checklist. Now, I wouldn't say that this is something that's definitive. If you don't fall within this exactly, um, that you're going to be um, amenable to a, a cash balance plan. But it's kind of a general rule of thumb to give you an idea of whether or not conversations with us uh, might be a good thing to start. So typically... 35 years plus of age, uh, you can talk about this more later, but one of the reasons why age is a factor is the older you get. Um, age is a, is a factor in, in determining how much you can contribute, and the older you are, the more um, you're able to put in. Um, but certainly as a younger uh, participant, you can benefit uh, greatly. Uh, typically earn at least $300,000 annually. And there's some other bullet points here I'll let you run through. Um, desire to contribute more than 66000 annually. So essentially this bullet point is saying, look, maybe you've maxed out your 401k. Is there more that you can do? And yes, integrating a cash balance plan with a 401k is going to allow you to contribute more and thus have a, a greater tax saving. And... Um, this is an important point. This last one is, is expect to be able to make that contribution for at least three years. So there's a nice overview. Uh, Nate, what would you like to expand on um, with kind of the ideal uh, person uh, as far as eligibility and start talking about having a cash balance plan? Yeah, absolutely. I think I think the ideal candidate's about 35 years old, um, does well, has consistent income. And you're right, might be maximizing their 401k plan or their SEP contribution up to about 66,000 and has the means to do more. And so that's when we'll explore adding a cash balance plan in addition to the 401k plan and really, really accelerate the retirement savings. I also often refer to it as putting the retirement plan on steroids, but it's a great way to quickly save a large sum of money over a very short period of time and defer that money from taxes. So right around $300,000 a year in income. Uh, if we are making a six-figure contribution to a retirement plan, we want to make sure that the business owner is still able to maintain their lifestyle, right? We don't want to take all their profits and put it into a plan, but we want to make sure that any excess profits we're able to put into a retirement plan and defer those dollars from taxation. Uh, you're right. We do like to see these plans go out for at least three years. Uh, we do call them retirement plans. The IRS um, and others want to make sure we're using them as a retirement plan and not as tax vehicles. Although they make great tax vehicles, uh, we like to see them go out for at least three years. That way we, uh, we're confident that we're meeting the permanency standard when we put these plans in place. But yeah, about 35 years old will probably net you about 100000 maybe a little bit more in contribution. So that's a good... 35 to 40,000 over what your 401k allows. And as we get into the mid 40s, early 50s and 60s, you know, the contribution amount is accelerated up to 200,000, 300,000, potentially 400,000 a year in contribution. So uh, a great way to save for retirement. All right. What if you are an independent contractor? We know recent years there's been, oh, um, a pretty big growth in the amount of independent contractors and more non-traditional ways of, of establishing um, your employment in your business in relation to maybe a company that you're working for. Can you talk a little bit about uh, maybe the independent contractor, the challenges they have and how a cash balance plan could help them? Yeah, absolutely. The, the independent contractors are, are great candidates for retirement plans, uh, cash balance plans specifically. Uh, one reason they don't have employees. These are these are qualified retirement plans. So if you do have eligible employees, uh, you do have to cover them with a benefit. And so the great thing about independent contractors, a lot of them don't have employees or maybe have a few employees that uh, maybe don't meet the eligibility requirements. Maybe they're 1099 contractors, for example. So 
Uh, they're great candidates. They have challenges just like every other business owner. You know, they've got bills to pay, um, you know, maybe some student loans to, they're still working to pay off. Uh, maybe a mortgage that they're trying to get a little more under control, save for their kids' college savings, et cetera. And now they find themselves 40 to 45 years old, potentially, and they want to retire in 10 to 15 years. And they can see what type of lifestyle they want to have in retirement. And frankly, putting away $66,000 a year for the next 10 years just isn't going to save enough for them to retire comfortably on their terms. And that's when we'll look to add a cash balance plan and really accelerate those retirement savings. Um, it's a little less costly for the independent contractor uh, to put together a cash balance plan because we don't have multiple groups that we have to test and show the IRS at the end of the year that these plans are not discriminatory. So there's less testing. There's a little less work on my end. Uh, the bills are a little bit lower to put one of these plans in place. But the savings, the contribution amount is just as great whether you're an independent contractor or you've got two or three other uh, partners in your business and a handful of employees. Great insight. And a good segue into um, the amounts that we can put in. Uh, what we've got is a just a, a small plan example. Um, I'm going to read some of the disclosures here because they are important. The results may require plan amendments to a 401k profit sharing plan. So in this example, um, this is uh, illustrating somebody with a 401k who integrates a cash balance plan with a 401k and profit sharing, which is a really neat thing to be able to do, uh, although it takes expertise uh, that we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, it assumes a 40% tax rate, which in, like you mentioned, in states like California and New York, that's not uh, not outside the realm of possibilities. And uh, remember, taxes are deferred only. And these designs are for illustration purposes only. Um, I think some of the other notes in there are S-Core entity formation, uh, things like that. But let's look at the illustration that we have here. And this is for kind of the 2022 uh, tax year. Uh, what we have here is a one owner plan. So this could be a perfect example of an independent contractor. Uh, they've got a, a age 45, $132,000 a year salary. Um, and uh, they've integrated a 401k uh, profit sharing and cash balance plan. Uh, can you first off, maybe walk us through the process of how they come to these numbers, i.e. they're going to have to have a pension consultant and actuaries like future plan uh, to run through this and make sure these calculations are correct. Uh, but talk about the numbers a little and maybe the impact this may have uh, on your business in tax savings. Yeah, absolutely. So, so this might be an example of an S corp owner um, who has 132,000 of W2 each year and they have uh, you know, quite a bit of profit still sitting in the S Corp that at the end of the year, they would take a distribution from the S Corp and uh, pay taxes on that. So usually what we'll do is sit down with the business owner, look at the 401k and the profit sharing plan first. And at 45 years old, you can put away, you know, based on this income, maybe close to 160,000 total uh, between the profit share and the 401k contribution. Uh, you know, a lot of times if you're 45 years old and you're looking out, okay, maybe I want to retire when I'm age 60. Uh, let me pause there for a second. I, I think you must misspoke a little bit. If they only had the 401k and profit share, their contribution amount max could be about oh, $66,000, right? Now, if they add the cash balance plan in this illustration, they're specifically going to get an additional $138,621 that they're going to be able to save into the retirement and save on taxes there for a total of 167. I got that right? You, you do. It's okay. uh, without the cash balance plan, uh, the profit sharing contribution would be greater than $7,900. Right. Uh, when, when you have one owner, no employees, uh, you know, it, it, it meets the definition of a, a single employer plan. And that kind of changes the dynamics a little bit for the profit share. You're limited to 6% of your W-2 income. So 
So when we add the cash balance to the profit share, some of the rules get merged. I try not to get too hung up on the limit that uh, the limitation now of the profit sharing when we add the cash balance, because even though the profit share is limited to 6%, the cash balance is greater now than 100% of your compensation. So we're more going to make up for that slight limitation in the profit share. So really what that does, it really allows us to accelerate the retirement savings. So without the cash balance, if I'm saving at 60 to 66,000 a year and I want to retire in 15 years, that's close to a million dollars that I've saved uh, for retirement over that 15 year period. And that might be well and good for some folks, um, others, you know, having a million dollars at retirement is just not going to allow me to live the lifestyle I want. And that's when we'll look to add the pension plan, not just for tax deduction purposes, but to really accelerate the retirement savings. So 401k profit share by itself, maybe a million dollars in 15 years, add the cash balance plan over that 15 year period, you're retiring with closer to 2.6 million in retirement. So here's a question for you. I want to clarify for the uh, listeners. Uh, annual salary, in this case, it's an escort. And I just want you, everyone to understand the mechanics of this. Some people may be saying, well, if if the escort owner has W-2 wages of $132,000, how are they able to contribute $167,000 in the cash balance plan? Can you explain those mechanics a little? Yeah, and really without getting too far out into the weeds, uh, it is a defined benefit plan. So we're going to define the benefit. How much can you accumulate? Uh, there is a there is a lifetime limit of about three point three three point four million dollars at retirement. So if you're 45 and the document says you're going to retire at age 65, for example, and you're trying to get to the maximum, uh, putting away that dollar amount over a 20 year period is going to allow you to get a little bit closer to your lifetime limit. And and let me interject here. The question is, some people might be thinking, well, if they're only making $132,000, where do they get the rest of the money to contribute? And I, I think in this example, there were some undistributed W-2 income in the escort because they wanted to save on taxes that way. And you've kind of shifted over more money to W-2 income. Is, is that typically what you do? Yeah, they've got this uh, S Corp owners are a little bit unique because they uh -huh. have to take a W-2. Um, right. The IRS wants to see a reasonable W-2. And sometimes not very often anymore, but we used to see W-2s artificially low, maybe $40,000 for a doctor. Right. So they want to see a reasonable W-2. Now, keep in mind that the S Corp can still have profits in the S Corp at the end of the year. So as 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 an individual like this, he's really wearing two hats. He's an employee, but he's also an owner. And so as an employee receiving a W-2, you're going to be able to make a contribution to the 401k and take a tax deduction for the W-2. Gotcha. Um, you know, the, 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 the cash balance, the profit sharing contribution, that's a check that's written by the S-Corp. So we want to make sure that there's enough profits in the S-Corp to, to write that check. Occasionally, I'll meet an individual and, you know, I'll ask them, you know, we'll go down, start down this path and I'll ask how much did they make? And they may tell me, hey, I, you know, I made a million dollars last year. OK, great. How much did you pay yourself in W-2? Well, one hundred and thirty two thousand. Right. So, and that, that, that's that's the essential point there. So I, I think it's when we design these plans, it's, you know, it's a conversation coordinated with the uh, client CPA on on where to take profits or and where to put income. And if we design that right, we can up your contribution or amount and still, you know, have you have enough cash flow to, to live and pay your, pay your bills and go on vacation. So the big thing is on the tax savings here, 66,816. Geez, if, if I was going to make that savings, it sounds great, but guess what? That's just for one year. <laughs> this it's not it's the tax savings and the contribution are not just a one time deal. This happens every year that the cash balance is in place. Now, the contribution amounts and thus the tax savings may be different on a year by year basis. But you, know, you can see on a one year uh, picture here uh, over, say, 10 years, you can see what the benefit you can get an idea of the benefit from a contribution to your retirement 
and a tax savings uh, will be. So um, on that note, I'll, I'll say uh, I, I think that one of the key points here is we are not tax advisors. And so don't take this as tax advice. Definitely. We love we want to have conversations with your CPAs and coordinate that. So get tax advice from your CPAs when you're talking about this and designing a plan um, with uh, pension consultants and actuaries. Any last thoughts on this or do you think we covered everything? No, I think I, I just would reiterate, uh, you know, over that 15 year period, saving about uh, $2 million in retirement and, uh, you know, writing a check to yourself and taking the tax deduction. Uh, you know, very powerful. Uh, yeah, that's a good way of putting it. How, how can I write myself a, a, a check and get a tax savings on that? Uh, yeah, it sounds like a good deal. All right. Well, I think one thing I would say is that um, a lot of people may be familiar with, say, a, a simple IRA or a 401k and, you know, the solo 401ks even. And the the complexities, they're not too complex. There's no question when you start designing and implementing and making sure um, they're managed over the years, cash balance plan are uh, more complex. They require a higher level of expertise and you definitely want to be working with folks that are familiar with them and have that depth of expertise and experience uh, for all aspects of a cash balance plan. Um, not only to ensure you have good results, but to ensure that you comply with all the IRS and ERISA uh, regulatory issues and testing and things like that. So that's an area that uh, myself and Nate uh, focus on. Um, I'm, uh, as a partner and advisor and wealth manager, the investment management of cash balance plans are different than what you might normally be uh, used to, whether it be your uh, a trust account or an investment account or an IRA account. And we'll talk about that topic on another uh, um, uh, video. And from a actuarial standpoint and testing and design, um, you really need to have a, uh, a very high level of competency with your actuaries and your pension consultants. And uh, that's what Nate and his team do. He's a certified pension consultant with a future plan who focuses on the design, implementation, and testing of cash balance plans along with, along with 401ks and things like that. But uh, so hopefully this was helpful for you. If you need to get a hold of us and have any questions and want to, Further education on any of these topics, you can see our contact information here. Um, on that note, Nate, I want to say I uh, really appreciate your time. And uh, I hope the listeners found this of value. Until our next uh, YouTube video that we're going to be presenting here on this series, we will speak with you later. Nate, take care. Very much appreciate your insights and uh, we'll talk soon.